Matter 2. And I saw her face. I had to make a choice. Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about subjective refraction. So that means that the patient is going to actually be saying what they prefer. People usually remember being asked if they like one or two while the optometrist is flipping the lenses in front of them seeing which view they like better. Before I go into the details, I want to thank all my new optometry related subscribers because AOA put me on the Optometry's Meeting website. My video, you can offer the link to the website in the sidebar. People have been watching my videos and I definitely appreciate it. So thank you for coming by and watching. And thank you AOA for putting my video up on, on the website. That was pretty cool. I don't know if I ever said before, but I'm an optics lab TA. So uh, we just got these track jackets in. They say team optics. I think they're pretty cool. They're really comfortable. I like them a lot. Most people remember the subjective refraction. This step would happen after autorefract, ret, or sometimes they take the starting off point of your glasses that you have currently. So the steps that are taken thereafter, the starting point, the way I learned it last year is not going to be the way I actually do it when I, when I really get into the swing of things and uh, end up doing it faster, you know? So the way we learn it in school is very systematic. It's still fast, but it's very systematic. So there are steps, certain steps that you have to do in a certain order. So the first one is MPMVA, which stands for the most plus for maximum visual acuity. So the way we do that is we um, blur you. And what we mean by blur is by adding more plus lenses in front of what you're seeing through. There's this thing called uber minusing when you can prescribe too much minus and the patient will say that they can still see like the same line. So it's kind of complicated. But the bottom line is you don't want to be over minus because you don't want to be straining your eyes to be able to see it. If you prescribe glasses with it, you're looking through it all day and you you could be straining through that extra minus that's prescribed. So MPMV is the first step that's taken, and it's to make sure that you're not over minus. You don't have too much sphere. What's the lowest line you can make? LLC3. Anything below that? Uh, APS025. Anything below that? <coughs> no. Here? Medio TZZ. Anything on that bottom line? No. How about here? Uh, no, which PMT? Then the next two steps are working on the cylinder. And this is when you're actually asked which is better, one or two. This is what the patient is seeing during this entire test. It's a single line of letters. First, usually you find, you refine the axis, like where in, in what meridian on your glasses, you're going to prescribe the extra cylinder. Okay, I want you to tell me which line is here. This is one, this is two. One. So we set up the lenses in a certain way so that we were finding the axis. This is called the Jackson Cross Cylinder. When it's oriented in this way, the axis is moved using the dial in the direction of the red dot on the view that the patient said was better. Once we have refined the axis to our liking and to the patient's liking, we're um, refining the power or how much cylinder we're going to prescribe. This is one. This is two. True. I'm orienting the JCC here so that I can determine the power. And if the patient chooses the red, they need more sill, which can be adjusted with this other dial. And you can see the numbers change in that little window. You MPMVA again, so you blur again and then you bring them back because when it's when the axis is refined then they might be able to be to see more with less minus or more plus. Pete steps one through four on the left eye. Then after you're done with the final MPMVA on the left eye, we do what's called binocular balance. So binocular balance is the concept of having your eyes working together and make sure that the images on the retina are 
on the retina at the same time. During binocular balance, you open both eyes up, but then we put dissociating prisms in front of the eyes. This is the dissociating prism, and here is how you adjust how much prism is put in front of the eye. A prism is put in front of each eye to make two images. So you're seeing double, which is completely normal. You should be seeing double. When you see it, you compare the two images, and if they're both clear, or they're both as clear as each other, then you know you're binocularly balanced. If one's much clearer than the other, then you have to uh, adjust the prescription so that they're ba so that they're balanced. Once you get the two images balanced, you can take the dissociating prisms away, and then the patient will see one. And then after that, you MPMVA a final time. If there's no near correction, like um, bifocals progresses, and if there's no prism, uh, that's it. That's your prescription for your glasses. This is the best way because we're actually getting the patient's feedback to see what they actually like to see because uh, the way they auto-refract or the way they write might be way off from what they actually like to see, and it's really important what the person likes to see because that's why they're getting glasses. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it made sense as much as possible, and I hope you now know what's going on when uh, you're being asked between one and two.